Welcome to the Pursuit of the Perfect Race. I'm Coach Terry Wilson, and with each episode, I bring stories of athletes to you that share their experiences at races in order for you to learn how to have your perfect race. We will hear stories from athletes of all ages, abilities, and races of all distances. So regardless of where you fit in, there's something in there for you. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Now let the pursuit begin. I'm not because of peer pressure. 
show I was seeing as setting and project team at work and then sort of everyone had a kind of a starting place for taking it and I went, I'm not going in, that's something you get to do. And I had sort of one of those first questions in my head and picking a special meeting we are, I went through the photo that I wanted to say, I did it too, I ran out of it and I started my head running and I had a moment to sort of run 10 days sit for a week because the company went like uh, I eventually sort of gave my life for a few years, and I came in with 2020. And I actually, for some unknown reason, I managed to drive myself through a marathon. Uh, and it was like I thought I was done with money. I said, I'm going to do what I can possibly have at all. And because my legs and my knees to sort of like run the marathon, and I said, what well, else you can run the marathon? You can run any further than that. Your legs is going to fall off. That was sort of the thing I learned. <laughs> so I felt it is. Uh, and then as one of the others that I had a particular time, sort of close to 2010, and one had the same book, including me, of course, we had a book run. Uh, and that's when kind I of realized that maybe, maybe the problem wasn't money, maybe the problem was that I never considered running. Something that you, you're actually allowed to be at, uh, sort of a board to run. But that sort of gave me the idea of maybe there's more to running than just sort of, you know, maybe if I sort of run a book, sure, the shoes are always around, I'm going to run, and then when I got the grass up here, and I was like, oh, there's a thing called running to eat. Maybe uh, there's a way for me to make money for this sport. And uh, so that sort of started my journey into both. Uh, my curiosity about sort of longer races, slower races, being on my feet for a long time. So what I found was that uh, it was really calling me into my mind to take these really long walks. That's the same time I trained for about the half marathon and the marathon. I was sort of paying these really, really long Sunday walks. Like a really old person, I seem to be uh, at least in the late of things. And I sort of managed to finish the races on that. I sort of went, okay, well, there's something in this. So I found that. So I found that sort of well, if I did a short miss run on it, I start thinking about what I'm actually doing, uh, there might be something to this. And um, I also sort of at that point, uh, I started working at the same place as the university friend. And, um, and when we started, I didn't, I didn't know. I sort of, I sort of got a computer, I got a pizza, I got to track cocaine pizza, I was sort of essentially me. Um, Yeah, that 
in 2015. That's a gorgeous resource that I had a few years off from, from Opera. That's where Brian and a lot of other nice stuff going on, essentially. And then uh, last year, uh, essentially, I went back to this fantastic crowd of people. Uh, and uh, I'm just, I'll just talk so much about the people that joined up. So this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful community. Sort of, 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 sort of
things and then sort of let you off just in the middle of something that was really weak and then sort of I found my life to you to give me a new agent. So, you also have to worry about how much food you eat because you've obviously got to be hungry as well as training. Your sleep is not the same schedule as most people. How are you balancing getting enough food, prepping for food, and then also spending that time with your family, which is way more. And you also want to work in a more specific way. How do you balance all this effectively? Can you get enough food? So, I think that it is. Which eventually you want to first things out, sort of this kind of so man, you're a sloppy or hard to do this. I essentially eat what I'm going to do my way. Um, I think I had something sort of close to a low carb camp. That's not happening anymore. I sort of like most people do. And maybe what's interesting is that I don't know if I do some breakfast. So, I, I, I ended up with what is it that could have been a bit of a bit similar to intermittent fasting, actually, because uh, having a primary meal by each day is actually lunch. Uh, so, that's why I tried to get it in as much sort of energy and the nutrients that I need to try to get those during lunch. So, uh, and then quite a bit of almost all of this ends up being sort of with me. I go out to Saudi and I'll just go somewhere where I can get it. Everywhere. So 
years, so he was kind of listening to him because he's the first one. And then when he was in the middle of his trip, I remember how often he was around. He started, he started his class, he just came out of the stairs, you know, he was in the last time I heard him about the course, and everyone went to the trip. And when he got to the same place, that's all of a sudden I was thinking about this. You know, like everybody used to like some people just speed your way, and of course you have to do those when you know it. And you never got it off that long, so most people probably came in for a time between maybe high like 40s, low 50s. But uh, as soon as you said, everyone's heard this movie, it's one way long. And I think after you grab the guys, people are sort of shouting, people that already know each other, are sort of are already sort of having these small conversations in the group. I don't know, it's sort of sort of an idea just for reflecting where it's sort of, where it's sort of hanging around, listening into all the conversations, and sort of trying to figure out where it all went over and over again. So, because that's also the thing that sort of, when I had a whole lot of friends, and then people went out sort of doing crap results, they had the lowest bit numbers. So, had a baby, for example, he had, what I think, since Sort of see it generally, yeah. 
continuous data as well. There's a general scorecard of some continuous data and extra boost, but um, when you start doing the same thing, it's usually not because you have to play entire this you know, see there's a chance of extra image data in the way nobody will figure it out. And it should be this Thank you. 
they're sort of, you know, kind of in a way it tends to be hard, but actually rich. Um, but I'm going to give you some energy that also wrote up in as well. We'll try, hopefully, sorry, they will go to get better from there. That's why I have 143, and then 43 was really I just developed writing and started sort of flipping what I asked Bush. And then those sort of first two points, I wanted to be my else, so I guess that the turning point, I was complaining on who I am for my life, or sort of this is, I pushed it, but I'm sort of, uh, like I'm running a podcast, and I'm like, where am I at? I'm sort of, this is tough. So you're not quite even to that team. You're not yet ready to see that. Yeah, and I just, I'm not going to see that for this surprise, or I'm going to tell you for seeing that for that, so I'm like, I'm going to do that, like, it's just how hard I can do that to push it. That's not a time I'm really struggling. So I get out there, and I'll look at my watch, and I'm going to 25 minutes. 25 minutes, that's sort of what I should be if I'm running DC. Then if I look at my car, then I have to look at my head, and I'm like, then what's up to you? So I put some of that vital series that I get out there, and I'm actually pushing it harder. Mentally, I'm exhausted because I'm pushing. And I don't think this needs to know where I was to sort of piece things just to have come out of it. But I might as well help the work for me to have a chance of figuring this out and giving myself some rest. But I, what, what I need to do is just keep on pushing until I have a proxy on my L. That is the last one L, the proxy on my L, and I'm not going to interrupt you. It's a song, it's just a song song I learned, and I still hope that when I'm going back in, I find my face pushing to one mile mark or one mile left mark, and I can walk from there to no more. Uh, and so I can sort of do my legs up their breasts, and I should be able to make the time that's good enough to sort of sit down and get better. That's how I say, push it, push it, push it, push it, and I can sit down at one mile mark, look at my watch, and I'm like, okay, I got somewhere between 16 or 20 minutes. I don't remember exactly how so long. This is walkable. If I walk just at a brisk pace, I should get in with a four or five minutes to spare at least. So I don't have done that in previous loops. It shouldn't be that hard, but I just mentally drained of this effort. So I started walking. And uh, what I think is a kind of thing, I sort of, I actually feel fairly okay. It's sort of, but it's sort of, it's starting to so I and I, I get back to it. There's just one last hill, yes, before the home stretch. And I have a sort of, since, since that is part of every single loop. So I have been there 42 times before. I had no idea. And I know that if you walk this hill, it takes you two minutes from sort of the bottom of the country until you're at the, you get a few points to finish line. I look at my watch and I say, I got six or seven minutes. And I'm like, I'm possibly on time. And I have a slight problem with just around wavering all over it. Run the place where I like, that's all I have to do that. And I'm like, yeah, I'll bring it into this hill. And I'm like, I need to sit down. I just want to sit down. I don't know how to say that's the dumbest of the cap. So I like to push and I'm like, ah, I'm not going to get it. It's just, I don't know, it's just the wrong way of bringing up that hill. And I get up and see the flag and I have to sort of start seeing the gates. And I just walk in. And I sort of, I try to go out and sort of look inside me. And that's sort of where I start realizing that I, for whatever reason, this is where it's gone. Uh, because with the pace so I've, I've been traveling the last while, and it's just, it's just not doable. It's just too time slow. And my legs are at this morning. And uh, so that's, that's all of a sudden where I realized that somewhere between, somewhere in the next loop, the wheels fell off. And, uh, Sort of when I think that's where I'll this is, I realize that if I go out on the next one, I realize that's where as I'm walking towards the finish line for the like 43rd loop, I can't walk with straight. <laughs> that's telling me something. I have a job, and it's right, it's right, I need some. So 
is a book from Ellen which she did one last year this week. Uh, I sort of get into a solid place before that. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you were able to learn something from today's episode. If you enjoy the show, please take a minute to leave a review on iTunes or share it with a friend. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you'd like to see pictures from this athlete's race, learn more about who I am, what I'm doing, or be on the show yourself to share your story, check out my website at CoachTerryWilson.com. Until next time, continue the pursuit.